Well, there you go. The NFL franchise tag window is now closed. There will be a lot of available options for the Eagles, whether they were just released and or not given a franchise tag. Xavier McKinney should be the Eagles' number one priority. Remember, he locked down Justin Jefferson. Plus, Bleacher Report gives us a hypothetical James Bradbury trade for the Eagles. And six teams once again are linked to Saquon Barkley, and the Eagles are one of them. And last but not least, Jason Kelsey retires. Cam Jurgens ready, but now he's jumping through burning tables? What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Talk Podcast. And today, as always, we got a lot to get into. But before we do that, Eagle Nation, can I ask y'all for a favor? Hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss the videos. So just last video, we talked about the Eagles possibly trying to get C.J. Garner-Johnson back to help this vacant safety position. Remember, re Blankenship and Cindy Brown are the two safeties going into next year, and one of them is recovering from an ACL tear. But we have great news, Eagle Nation. The franchise tag window has come and is now gone, and so the Eagles have options as it pertains to safety. I'm talking young, talented options. According to Mike Garofalo, no transition tag for giant safety Xavier McKinney. Sources tell me in rap sheet, He'll hit the open market. This is a guy I've been looking at every time I put up that safety chart. The dude is an absolute playmaker in the secondary, played at Alabama, has a connection with Devontae Smith, who needs an extension, by the way. Xavier McKinney had over 110 tackles in the 2023 season, three interceptions, 11 passes defended, and mind you, he's only 24 years old. This is a guy you want as a staple piece when you're trying to rebuild a secondary. He should absolutely be one of the first calls from Howie Roseman once the legal tamper window is open on March 13th. Another young option who really wasn't projected to be franchise tag, but once all the franchise news came out, he decided to take to Twitter and put this. Deuces. It can't just be a coincidence that he wasn't mentioned as a franchise tag candidate and or a guy who got it. But once the franchise tag window closed, he immediately put this on his Twitter. To me, that's saying, hey, guys, look at me. I'm available as well. So the Eagles are going to have to pick from CJ Garner Johnson, Xavier McKenney, and Cameron Curl. One of these guys absolutely needs to be signed, or Howie, you're not doing your job. Moving on to a linebacker that was released that could make sense for the Eagles, Adam Schefter tweeted, Dolphins are releasing started linebacker Jerome Baker per sources. The two sides discussed a restructured contract but couldn't reach an agreement. The Dolphins left the door open to him coming back if he chooses. This guy wasn't released because he's not a good football player. The Dolphins just couldn't come to an agreement with Jerome Baker, and it looks like they tried for a little bit. It just didn't work out. However, he knows Vic Fangio and could help out the Eagles at linebacker. I don't think even if you make this move, this is the only move that is made at linebacker. I'm still looking at the draft, and I'm looking at a lot of the free agent linebackers. We're just talking about this now because he was released today. The 2024 free agent tampering window is going to be crazy, especially at some of the positions that the Eagles need to acquire. I just think the way the Eagles cap space is looking 44 million right now, but soon to be over 50, maybe 60 million. A lot of that got to get spent on the defensive side of the ball because that needs the most fixing. You brought in the coordinator, Vic Fangio. Now it's time to get the guys and a lot of people are going to say, well, Philly Mike, they can't get everybody, everybody, everybody. I know. That's why you haven't heard me talk about anybody on the defensive line, barring we bring back Hassan Reddick. I think that linebacker, safety, and corner, anybody, and all the good people that are available need to be options for the Eagles when you're talking about having that much cap space. Howie Roseman and a win-now offense. Now let's go over all the players that were tagged and the players who were projected to be tagged who weren't tagged. Again, that's not the long list of free agent guys out there. There's a lot. We're talking about the projected guys and the guys who were tagged. Albert Breer, franchise tagged files today at the cutoff. Colts wide receiver Michael Pittman, Buccaneers safety Antoine Winfield, Jaguars defensive end Josh Allen, 
Bears cornerback Jalen Johnson, Ravens D-tackle Justin Mad, you can say the last name, and Panthers outside linebacker Brian Burns. Adam Schefter then tweets, players not tagged and now are scheduled to become free agents next week. Chris Jones, Christian Wilkins, Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs, Michael O, Baker Mayfield, Calvin Ridley, and a guy we've been talking about, Xavier McKinney. Again, I just want to reinstate, these are not the only free agents these guys were talked about to get the franchise tag, and last minute, they didn't give it to him. Speaking of a player who thought he was going to get tagged and didn't, Saquon Barkley is now once again being linked to the Eagles. Not only the Eagles, but six teams, according to Pat Leonard, a Giants beat writer. He tweets, Sources view the Baltimore Ravens, Las Vegas Raiders, Chicago Bears, New England Patriots, Houston Texans, and Philadelphia Eagles as some primary potential suitors who have the resources need and interest to possibly sign Saquon Barkley. Stay tuned. Y'all know my take on it. Saquon Barkley is a very good player, but if you're telling me pay more for Saquon Barkley, but you can pay less for DeAndre Swift, and I'm only talking a little less because Swift looks like he wants to hit the market and see what's out there. I'm taking Swift just because we already seen what he can do in this offense when being underutilized, imagine when Keller Moore is utilizing him, especially in the passing game. I'm under the impression if three years, $18 million is enough to get it done, we got the money. I think you got to consider three years, 18 mil. That comes to six mil per year. That's what Miles Sanders is getting. That's what David Montgomery is getting while sharing the backfield with Jameer Gibbs. Six mil is not that much with the cap we have. Now, before we get to the hypothetical trades for James Bradbury and Avante Maddox via Bleacher Report, plus Philly Mike thoughts on Jason Kelsey's retirement and how important Cam Jurgens going to be next year, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Bet US, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. Receive 125% bonus on your first three deposits. The link is in the description and you can find it in the pinned comment section. Bet US, the easiest sports book out there. I'm telling you, future bets are Great for the NFL. You could bet all year round. Think about it this way. It's March. Nobody really knows who's going to win the NFC East, the AFC South, the NFC North. You can make a future bet if you got a handle on it. And the odds are going to be a lot more stronger for you than if you did it, say, August, September, October. So go put your bets in. Link in the description. So let's start with the Bradbury trade. It's not going to look pretty. The package, Arizona trades the 2024 seven-round pick, which is number 222nd overall, for Bradbury and a 2024 fifth-round pick from Tampa Bay, which we have, which is the 160 overall. Pretty much, we're paying somebody to take his salary. Here's the issue. Bradbury has $17.2 million in dead money remaining on his contract. Cutting him before March 13th will cost the Eagles an additional $12.4 million in cap space while trading him would cost $11.1 million. Trading him between March 13th and June 1st would cost $20.8 million cap space, while trading him after June 1st would cost $8.3 million. So they're saying it's going to be very hard to trade Bradbury. There are stipulations we can do if we end up cutting him after June 1st to where we only get hit with a $4.25 million cap hit in 2024 and a $10 million cap hit in 2025. These are just options if you fully believe that he's cooked and is going to hurt the defense and we are trying to look to replace him. The Avante Maddox trade is this. Eagles trade a 2024 second round pick, 53 overall, and cornerback Avante Maddox for Legereus Sneed. Pretty much they're saying trading Maddox before June 1st would yield minimal cap savings. Instead of saving 7 mil, we'll only save 1.5 but would give Philly a little extra room to facilitate an extension for 27-year-old Legereus Sneed. That is going to happen, but, you know, Bleach Report, hypotheticals, got to talk about it. As for Jason Kelsey, man, I was in tears listening to that 40-minute retirement speech. Didn't have time to talk about it yesterday. Didn't do a video yesterday, but I did drop a YouTube short. If you missed it, here it is, sending off Jason Kelsey. 
So it's official. March 4th is the day that the legendary Jason Kelsey, one of the greatest Eagles ever, and soon to be first ballot Hall of Famer, hosted a press conference. Where I announce that I am retiring. Where I announce I am retiring from the NFL after 13 seasons with the Philadelphia Eagles. From one of the greatest speeches ever after a Super Bowl victory to having one of the best careers ever, not just as an Eagle center, but as a NFL center all time. He was the little big dog. He was an underdog his whole career. And in this interview, this retirement speech, he said a lot of great things, but there's one thing he had to say one more time. Hungry dogs run fast. <laughs> Not going to lie, that sad, hungry dogs run faster for the last time. That hit me very, very hard. The whole thing hit me hard. Living his high school days to the Super Bowl Eagles to people doubting him. Man, I love the little big dog, Jason Kelsey. However, I wouldn't put it past Jason Kelsey to come back to the Eagles. Look what he's doing on the first day of retirement. Jumping on a burning table. The dude has too much energy. Maybe his wife says, you know what? Football is less scary. Why don't you go back? I'm just kidding. But I do want to remind you what Cam Jurgens has done and what Kelsey said when we drafted him. So uh, so this is my favorite player in the draft. I'm not just saying that because we Hell picked yeah. him. Uh, the Eagles have been uh, using me uh, to, like, evaluate some of the centers coming out. And of all the guys that I've looked at, like for the past two, three years, out of all the guys that compare the most to myself, uh, this guy is him. I mean, he is so athletic, so fast. You see him out in space, he runs. He's a natural athlete. You see the fluidity. He played tight end, a position convert. He's only been playing offensive line for two years. Um, you know, 49240, 7'10, 7'193 cone. This guy is a freak athletically. He has the best chance to be a difference maker at the center position. I, I like this kid a lot. I really do. And again, Philadelphia Eagles Central. Cam Jurgens, while being in the NFL, 689 snaps, zero sacks allowed, zero penalties against him. The dude has not committed a penalty. If anybody had to be the replacement for Jason Kelsey, he's a good one to have. With all that being said, I go by Philly Mike. This is the Philly Talk Podcast. Drop the muscle emoji. Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section. The Eagles got to get it popping come March 13th. A lot of money to be spent. Go Howie Roseman. Leave all your thoughts in the comment section. We out.